Hi, I am Siavai Zangene and I'll present our work BranchNet. BranchNet is a convolutional neural network that we use to predict those branches that Tage finds hard to predict. BranchNet is very powerful because it can identify correlated branches even in noisy global branch histories. To avoid expensive runtime training, we train BranchNet at compile time. But before we get into the details of BranchNet, let's first define noise. There are two sources of noise, branches that constantly change directions and branches with non-deterministic positions in the global branch histories. In the presence of noise, there are too many history patterns for conventional predictors to remember. Let's dig deeper using an example. In this program, we have two loops. The first loop iterates for a random number of iterations and in each iteration, it increments variable x. The second loop iterates as many times as x. In this example, we are interested in predicting branch B, which is the exit branch of the second loop. The table on the right-hand side lists all the possible history patterns if n is two. It always includes two iterations of the first loop, a not taken and not taken and a taken, which is the exit branch. And then depending on the number of not taken Bs that we see, we can either predict not taken, or when we're ready to exit out of the second loop, we will predict taken. The total number of patterns for any n is order of n. Because of that, uh, this branch, branch B, is easy to predict for state-of-the-art branch predictors. Now let's make branch B harder to predict by adding a source of noise. When we add branch X, which guards whether we increment variable x in the first loop or not. Now we need to consider all the possible combinations of branch x being taken or not taken in the history patterns. For example, look at the first four rows in the table now. We need to at least remember four different patterns. Branch x being not taken, not taken, not taken, 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 not taken, taken, taken. As a result, now the total number of history patterns that we need to remember is order of two to the n. This exponential behavior is problematic even for state-of-the-art branch predictors like Tage. Let's make branch B even harder to predict. We add another loop guarded by branch Y right in the middle of the two loops we used to have. This loop iterates for a random number of iterations and has nothing to do with the prediction of branch B. But it is problematic for two reasons. First, as we can see in the table, it introduces so many new additional redundant patterns, so it is bad for any predictor, including Tage. But it is also has an additional interesting effect that because the number of iterations of the new loop is non-deterministic, it makes the position of branch X in the global branch history non-deterministic as well, which is particularly bad for predictors like perceptron, which rely on the exact position of branches in the global history. But we can do better than a single perceptron. We could use multi-layer neural networks. Multi-layer neural networks are traditionally problematic because their training is infeasible at runtime. But recently, Tarsa and others made two breakthrough discoveries. They've shown that CNNs can be trained offline because the training generalizes well across program inputs. And they've shown that CNNs can identify individual correlated branches in the global history, which helps us with dealing with noise. We built on the work of, of Tarsa and others to come up with BranchNet. BranchNet is a CNN that fundamentally improves some otherwise hard to predict branches. Using BranchNet, we show that coverage is the key to successful offline training of CNNs, not representativeness in profiling. Furthermore, we show that specializing the CNN architecture is absolutely necessary for branch prediction. And we also show that the BranchNet on-chip inference engine is both storage efficient and practical. Let's continue using our noisy example to see how BranchNet works. Branch B is actually predictable if we can know the values of J and X and we can do the comparison inside the predictor. The good news for us is that both variable J and X could be inferred from the global branch history. 
j is simply the count of not taken instances of branch b and x is simply the count of not taken instances of branch x to infer the branch counts we can have a very simple piece of hardware we have we would have a filter that would look for not taken instances of branch b and would produce a one and otherwise it would produce a zero for each branch in our history and then we would simply add up all these occurrences and put the result in a register. The value of this register equals the value of variable j. Similarly for variable x, we would identify the instances of not taken branch x, add up all the occurrences, and now we have the value of variable x in a register. Putting these two pieces next to each other and adding a comparator, we can now have a perfect 100% accurate branch predictor. Note that the prediction function that this hardware represents is input independent because it follows the program semantics in the source code. Now let's see how TARSA CNN, which is our prior work, is actually able to learn this input independent behavior. TARSA CNN consists of two main components. The first component is the convolution layer which can learn to identify branches X and B through its different channels, which can act like the filtered histories that I showed in the previous slides. The next component, which is a fully connected neuron, acts similar to the perceptron and can learn to do the count and compare. Now this works just fine and could achieve 100% accuracy. But the problem with this approach is that the neuron has too many connections to all the convolution outputs. This might be fine for a small history length, but as we keep increasing the history length, the number of connections for the neuron increases as well. And since this neuron is one of the most expensive components in terms of storage, latency, and training time, the, this CNN architecture is not going to be scalable. So to solve that problem, we've added sampling layers following the convolution layer. The sampling layer is going to cheaply do the counting for us. And as a result of the sampling layer, the fully connected neuron now only needs two connections for this example. Now, the reason why this, is, this works just fine is self-evident for this example. But we've also looked at the source codes of many hard to predict branches across spec benchmarks and we have empirically evaluated that this counting behavior is a common function that can be beneficial for branch prediction. This is one evidence of our claim that we need to tailor the CNN architecture for branch prediction to achieve effectiveness and efficiency. Thus far, I've been talking about the prediction capabilities of CNNs in abstract but can they actually be used in practice with offline training to achieve, to learn these input independent behaviors? Let's keep using our example for, to showcase the offline training. So for my offline training experiments, I have defined two user given inputs. The first one is N, which determines the range of number of iterations of the first loop. And the second input is alpha, which determines how often variable X is incremented within the first loop. And we're interested in evaluating the accuracy of branch B in certain conditions. For in evaluation, I'm gonna sample N from a range between five and 10, and I'm gonna evaluate the accuracy on five different values for alpha. First, let's look at the orange line which is the accuracy of 64 kilobyte page SEO. As you can see across the board, page performs very poorly. So we wanna do better than that. The blue bars show this, the CNN using two different training sets. But in, in both training sets, I chose a value of one for generating my training examples. If I choose a value of alpha of equal one, then variable x is always incremented in each iteration. That means we don't have enough coverage for training, 
because we're not exposing the behavior of branch X to the CNN. As a result, if you look at the blue bars, the CNN accuracy is actually very bad and is often worse than page. But now, if you look at the green line, which uses an alpha of 0.5 for training, we could see that the CNN accuracy is 100% across the board. Note that the range of N in training set three was between one and four, and it doesn't overlap at all with the range of N in my evaluation runs. This is an evidence for our claim that coverage is enough for offline training, and we don't need the exact representativeness for the history patterns that we use for training. Now, BranchNet architecture is actually more complex than the example I showed, but you could read the paper for more details. But one thing I wanna highlight here before moving on is that what I refer to as the BranchNet architecture is an abstract software model. To get to a practical branch predictor, we need a hardware implementation of the same architecture. I refer to the hardware implementation of BranchNet as mini BranchNet. Mini BranchNet is optimized for storage efficiency and low latency. And, and it has certain knobs that you could adjust to have different storage budgets per branch. And it has a four cycle latency. Now I don't really have time to go through all the optimization details and designs, uh, but I just wanted to put up this figure very quickly for this presentation which shows the implementation of the convolution layer during training and inference of mini branchnet. You don't really have to understand what all these boxes mean, but you could, you could see that there's a lot of operations going on through, during training, which requires floating point arithmetic, and it's gonna be time consuming, and it needs a lot of storage. At runtime, we don't need to do any of that, we just need a lookup table that has the pre-computed outputs for the convolution operations. We do similar optimizations across the layers. I suggest you to read the paper for understanding all the design details. To evaluate BranchNet, we use the following methodology. We use BranchNet to predict up to 41 static branches, and we use stage to predict the rest. For doing offline training, we run each program with all the available inputs to us and divide them into three different sets, training set, validation set, and the test set. We use Alberta inputs to actually train the branch and models. We use spec in train inputs to identify the most improved hard to predict branches. And we use spec reference inputs to report the final MPKI and IPC numbers as reported in the paper or in, the, in, the, in this presentation. To report performance numbers, we use our own simulator, Scarab, which is a detailed cycle level x86 simulator. You could find the details in the paper, but the most relevant part is that we use the four cycle prediction latency for both stage and branch. To evaluate the effectiveness of branchnet without restricting ourselves due to storage and latency, we compared a big variant of BranchNet to MTGSC, which is the winner of 2016 Branch Prediction Championship in the unlimitedly sized category. Our results show that big BranchNet, even compared to MTGSC, achieves 7.6% MPKI reduction on average, up to 15.7% MPKI reduction for our best benchmark leader. These results show that BranchNet has a fundamental advantage over Tage-like predictors, and we cannot simply get the same benefits by adding more storage to Tage. In our practical evaluation, we use two configurations for BranchNet. In ISO storage configuration, we took away storage from Tage and gave it to BranchNet. In ISO latency, we simply use additional storage for BranchNet as long as it doesn't add to the overall latency. We also compare to Tarsa Ternary, but note that Tarsa Ternary uses as much more than four times the storage needs of ISO latency branch. 
we show that BranchNet gives us significant amount of MPQI reduction, both compared to the TAGE baseline and even compared to our prior work, tar -Satanin. We also give, get a good amount of IPC improvement, especially in the ISO latency setting. In conclusion, we show that BranchNet can predict many branches that are otherwise hard to predict for conventional predictor. We show that BranchNet achieves this because we have tailored this architecture to the needs of branch prediction. But I also want to note that BranchNet is just a solution to the problem of noisy branches in the global history. We think that in general, the concept of using offline training for branch predictors need to be revisited. And the combination of offline training and machine learning opened the door to other novel solutions. Thank you very much, and I look forward to answering your questions in the Q&A session.